Hey everybody, today I'm going to show you how to fine tune the DJI Maverick Pro. I've uh, been filming with it now for about a week. We went out to the Utah mountains, it was quite cold, we got some really beautiful shots out there. I tried to do some real estate shoots with it and I did it right out of the box. In other words, I didn't fine tune anything. I was a little, um, uh, didn't like the settings on it. The yaw function, rotating the, the quad was way too fast. Um, the gimbal action was way too fast. Of course, it was. I'm new to the, the setup and, and the controller, but in, in any way, I want to make it so that I don't make the same mistakes I made. I have an Autel X-Star Premium. I love the bird, but there's no functionality on setting up these, these yaws or fine-tuning it. DJI gives us that ability. I haven't seen too many videos on setting it up, so I'm going to show you how I set it up to make a better uh, film of real estate, of scenic portrait, um, movements on the bird, slow it down, suppress it without having to go into tripod mode either. I'm just going to simulate some of those same attributes and others into normal flying. Let me show you how it's done. So here we are, we're ready, set and go with the DJI Go app running on my LG V10 phone, recording with the program Recordables. And you can see the DJI Maverick Pro is started and running, sitting on my office floor. I am using the controller, and we're going to come in and set some fine-tuning adjustments here. So let's get into how to um, prevent some of the awkwardness that I found in the DJI. One of the things I want to point out is this top menu up on this top line up here, we're going to notice that we have several uh, indicators. You'll see the outline of the quad and ATI. If we bring that up, we bring up our main settings and we're now in the, in the uh, quad mode. These settings here, we're, a lot of people went over this. These are kind of self-explanatory. Um, I don't really look at much in here once it's set up the first time. Okay, I rarely fly in sport mode, so I have my sport mode turned off. Of course, beginner's mode is turned off. I have my uh, maximum altitude at 110 meters, approximately 390 feet, I think that is, um, so that we're still within our FAA regulations. And I'm going out about 22, 2300 feet with our maximum distance of about 700 meters. I don't fly much further than that. So that really works well for me. If we go into our advanced settings here, one of the things we want to look at is our Expo tuning. That's what the EXP is. And that's how exactly what we want to work on to change our flight modes and our, our stick controls. So you're going to see we have a normal, we have a sport and a gentle. So we know normal is, our, is where we normally start out. We have a sport mode. What's gentle? Gentle is the tripod mode. Okay, so it doesn't exactly say it there and follow suit, but that's our tripod mode. I leave it in normal most of the time. And you can see our, our, our uh, values down at the bottom here are 20, 0.25, 0 0.20, and 0.25. When this was originally set up, this was at 0.25 as well. Okay, so what I did is the rudder, which controls the yaw function, the ability for the quad to rotate on its axis, um, was rotating too fast for my liking. So what I did is I went in and I turned it from 0.25 to 0.20, made all the difference in the world. If we look at our tripod mode, gentle mode, they're all at 0.2. So I basically said, I don't want that copter to rotate. I don't need it to rotate that fast in normal mode, but I want to do my throttle. I want to do my, my uh, forward and backward controls in normal function. So I left them alone, just changing my rudder. You could see in sport mode, everything goes up to about 0.35. And then in gentle, everything goes down to 0.20. What this is doing, if you look at this curve here, um, it flattens out the center. Now, this is all the way down to 0 0.10. That center is very flat, and then it gears up. So what that means is as we start turning our stick, and what I'm doing here is I'm moving that, that left stick 
it's very flat right there, which means it's not going to make a lot of movement at all. And then all of a sudden, it's going to get really fast. Well, we like it slow, but we don't want it to come down really sharp and get fast. So that's the point of kind of ironing this out a little bit and using different, uh, different codes. So right there is a point 19, close to the 20. You could see it's pretty slow in the beginning, and it ramps up and gets us right back to where we want to go to full rudder um, and full speed. But as we're moving that stick in this area, we're going to get very little control. It's going to be a very smooth setting there. So again, I like this at 0 0.20 is what I found to be um, great for my senses. Um, again, leaving everything else as is. So that's the expo control. So we see how that's set up with the 0 0.20. That works well. Now, if we hit this backspace button here, we're going to get into stick filtering. Your endpoint, this is very important. Notice I have it at 50%. What that means is that when I hit this yaw, this, uh, the, the left stick, it's going to be stuck at the maximum of 50%. Again, bringing that back to a very slow movement. So if we look at our expo and we see how this comes down, it's only going to get to 50%. It's not going to get into anything further. It's going to maximize that and stop it right there. So again, we got some great um, ways to slow down that. The gain we don't look at. Um, we've done a lot of research on it. A lot of people say, oh, you can, you can change it by the gain settings. Um, not based on what I've read in my research. We leave them all at 100%, leaves the gain or the, the attitude of the stick, how sensitive that stick is, um, to a better way of 100%. And again, all we're doing is changing these curves to slow that down. If we look at our throttle up, we got a very small space here, and then it kind of climbs nicely. Over with our rudder, we flatten that line out a little bit. With our forward movement, we left it the same, as well as our backwards and, and uh, side movements. Okay, so hopefully you got that. We're good with that. If we come down to the next setting, it's our navigation or visual navigation. I leave them all turned on. I want as much help buying this not into something as possible. As a matter of fact, I've enabled backward flying is set to off. Um, although I want it to fly backwards, when I'm looking for that right shot and I don't have a second person, a cameraman with me, what I wind up doing is, is, is it just feels a little dangerous to me having that fly backwards. The, in obstacle avoidance, it will stop. If somebody is running towards the system, it basically stops and warns. It does not fly backwards. This could be turned on in a specific situation when I am flying in an open field and somebody, and I know I'm going to catch a shot and I want that frontal view of somebody running towards the camera, I'll have the, the Maverick back up automatically. But right now I've left it turned off um, just for a more safe environment. Okay, we come down to the controller. We know our controller settings here. Just a couple of things. I change my C1 and C2s to center focusing and center median. That's what I do the most. I want to I want to focus and I want to get a good exposure. So I, I know it's a center point, and sometimes we're not always, you know, if we're using rule of thirds especially, we're not hitting that center point, but it's just a quick way of getting it quickly set in a in a reasonable area that we want to go. Um, the 5D button, I've, the only thing I've changed on that is the same thing, is when I push it down now, it goes to metering and focusing switch, um, because our other alternative was portrait mode. I very rarely use portrait mode, so I figured I'd just leave it there. Again, if we push down on that 5D button, you'll see it here in the blue. Um, that is uh, That brings up all these menus, um, as well as the, uh, the flight types of menus and others push it again and it, and it will return that menu coming down in our in our uh, transmission we never really touch that remember if we switch our our preview our phone or tablet to 1080 mode then we're maxing out all of our filming capabilities in 1080 i don't need to see you know my, i use this as a view scope it's surely not needed to be at 1080 i run it at 720 so i can get my 4k imaging um, the transmission bit rates, et cetera, is, is fine. 
batteries. We love to look at that every time we fly, not necessarily here. And here's our next area of advanced settings. And the gimbal speed, gimbal tilt, something that we've nobody's talked about really that I know of. Our gimbal speed. Again, I want to turn that gimbal speed down. I want to make it slow. I don't want to. That's full, that's full go right there. I want to bring it down. That's 100% down, and it comes down very nicely at 23. Um, you could see if we move it, move it to 80, it just flies. It's, you're not going to get anything cinematic with that. So again, I'm bringing it all the way down to that 20-ish um, mode right here. And it gives me, I could tap that button very lightly, and it's a very constant speed, or I can go full bore with it, and it's still reasonably usable at that speed. Okay? I want to point out one thing. I'm going to jump back to the main menu right here, and you'll see this little graph on the side here. This little graph to the side is actually my gimbal, right? So when once I trigger the gimbal, I start seeing... Um, you know, my graph so I can kind of judge what my tilt range is there. Going back in, I'm going to use the 5D button to click that um, here now. Uh, let's see. Okay, so let's go back into our menu here. And you'll see we were down on the gimbal settings. Okay, so I, I adjusted my gimbal speed so that my wheel smooths it out. Now here's a good thing that I, you know, I fly a lot of times, and as I'm lowering the camera, sometimes I wish I could tilt it up. Sometimes I wish, you know, maybe there's a, maybe there's a, a, a moon shot, and I don't, I can't fly high enough to get that moon shot, and I wish I could just tilt that camera up. Well, a lot of us don't know, but this gimbal tilt limit, our second option right here, this is allows us to tilt it up. It says 30 uh, degrees extensible. I turn that on. And now watch this. I'm at 100% right there. When you turn on your Maverick, if you were in the same position, you would see this, this uh, image right here. I am going to now use my up gimbal, and I could move it 30 degrees up. And now I'm actually looking virtually skyward with my Maverick. It's great. Um, here's an indoor shot with this. This is sitting on the ground. And right there at that red line that we're coming up on right there, um, that is what you guys see if you don't have this turned on. I can go 30 degrees up from there. And you can see that little red line coming in right over here. Here we are down at normal. And of course, we can go straight down to notice my gimbal speed. That's at full 100% gimbal speed. And I can, of course, just gently pull that trigger down. And that's about 50% of gimbal wheel. And you can see how slow it moves. It's great for when you're doing a shot and you don't want to make your viewers dizzy. Again, this, this additional gimbal movement of 30% extensible, moving it up, I love it for, um, especially if you're doing a close-up shot um, or you're lowering that, that uh, quad down, you want to see what's above you or above that 100% or 180-degree line. So going back into our system, I'm going to jump in over here, come down to gimbal, and you can see we did our speed, now we did our Gimbal tilt limit, I turn that on, that gives me a 30% gimbal up. The gimbal pan synchronous follow. So what this does is it synchronizes the gimbal pan with the yaw of the copter. It eliminates the choppiness. So the copter is not moving right now. The quad is sitting on my floor. But if I hit my right stick, or excuse me, my left stick, if I hit my left stick, I will notice that I get some movement out of the gimbal. This is the pan synchronous follow portion of it. It allows the gimbal to start so that it becomes a much more fluid pan. If this is turned off and I hit that, I am hitting my stick full, my left stick full left and full right, nothing moves. I turn this on, full left, full right, and you could see the gimbal moves just a little bit 
to smooth out would, would, which would be a jitter on if it was turned off. So we love that turned on. The other thing, our gimbal start-stop buffer. I have it set at 17. What this does, and I'm going to turn this uh, screen off so we can see it a little better right now. So when I hit my, my button up, the minute I stop it, it continues to slow down. Notice it's not a real jerky functionality. When it comes to a stop, it's smooth. Let's go back into our gimbal settings and set this buffer to zero. I'm going to shut this off. Our buffer is at zero. And when I hit my wheel and I let off the trigger, it stops it instantly. Notice how jerky that is. Now, again, I would try not to do that. But when I stop, it stops very suddenly. And again, if I'm trying to do something cinematic, it's not going to make the viewers happy. So again, coming into my gimbal settings, just showing you the opposite now. At almost a 30, at full 30 uh, setting, we're going to come in here and we're going to hit our button and let go. And that's that's 100% of gimbal. Notice how slow it is, extremely slow. Notice I let go, and you could see the little white dot. The little white dot is moving up. I am now letting go of my button now. Notice it's still moving. That is what we're setting there, that, that slowness for it to turn off the operation. I'm at full gimbal tilt. I let go of the button, it's still moving. That is the purpose. You can play around with this yourself, but the long, uh, excuse me, gimbal settings, the gimbal start stop buffer. In other words, it's buffering that so it's not a, a jittery movement. So I like this uh, somewhere a little bit in, in the middle there. And again, that, and you have to play with this so you can see what, it, what we're doing when we're letting our finger off exactly and how smooth that comes to a stop. So I'm leaving it at 19 and that's going to smooth it out. I hope you enjoyed this video. There's a lot of instructions that we're giving you here to smooth out your gimbal and your yaw so that you can become a better pilot at photography, cinematic or videography uh, shoots. Okay, hope you appreciate it. Have a great day. Thank you.